Hello, more intel from your girl in the spirit world. All right, let's do a few more of these spirits and the works of the flesh. And my uh, Bible reference is Galatians 5, verse 19. Now, I did the first four or five. Now, we're going to continue on after um, hatred variants. And, of course, I had to look these up because uh, they're very similar in nature, but they all do different things spiritually as well as naturally if you operate in these works of the flesh, all these works of flesh. Now, variants. <clears throat> Galatians 5, verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are made manifest. Which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Now we're on to variance. Now variance is self-interest, self-ambition, lack of agreement. And a lot of these related to division, contention, all of these. Uh, you all about you. It's me, myself, and I. And I'm going to get whatever I want by any means necessary. Whoever I have to step on, whoever I have to hurt, whoever have to lie, cheat, steal. And I don't think this is just uh, out in the world. This is in the church, too. They do it, too. Variance. Lack of harmony, agreement. Uh, you don't agree with any, what anybody else is saying. You're not trying to get together. You're not trying to collaborate. You're not trying to unify in the body of Christ, in the spirit, in the church. You want to do your own thing. You're trying to get your dang great. You're trying to get on them flyers. You're trying to fly out here and there so they can call you chief so-and-so, uh, uh, pastor so-and-so, prophetess so-and-so, evangelist, so you can be this great wonder overnight. You going to inherit anything? Nope. Lord gonna let you go fly in a little small little circle of influence. Them them, them 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 little baby engagements. He is never gonna let you be in the masses in the world. Because you too focus on uh yourself. That's the spirit of variance. And the more you get in that particular spirit, this one we get pride, arrogance, and then you all think you all that in a bag of chips. And then somebody gotta bring you low. He resists the proud, he give grace to the humble. That's the spirit of variance. Now, next one is emulation. Emulation, from what I looked up, ambition. See, they kind of all go together. Ambition, endeavor to equal themselves or excel others. You the overachiever, but we're not talking about overachievers in the world that are trying to find success in life. You know, trying to get ahead, get, you know, live past, you know, what they saw in their environment, their family. No, these people want to be better than everybody else. And we're talking about those in the church. They want to be the, the, better than anybody else. And if they see anybody look like they're doing a little bit better, have a little bit better, maybe more anointed, uh, they want to exceed. They want to emulate. You know, they, they don't want to, you know, be, be you know, uh, excelling in the eyes of God, the spirit of excellence. That's another good spirit there. Uh, they want to excel to look better than others, to, you know, be esteemed, to get their name called, you know, you know, to uh, hear their name, you know, called out, you know, in the ministry, in the churches and stuff. Emulation. You're not emulating to, you know, be inspired because there's a difference. This is when you're trying to be like somebody else so you can uh, overachieve and uh, do better than what they're doing. And you're not going to inherit because your motive's not right, your heart's not right, and your spirit's not right. Because you're not doing it for God's reasons. You're doing it for your reasons. That's the spirit of emulation. Now, the next one is wrath. Had to look at wrath a little bit because everybody thinks the wrath of God is this unrighteous anger. No, God has a wrath when you've been doing shicey stuff, when you've been doing shicey stuff to his people and his humans and his souls. That's when he try to correct it. Now, if this is the wrath of anger, and see, if you look down in Galatians 5, further down, it's called temperance. The fruit of the Spirit is temperance. That means you have the ability to control your temper. Not dealing with all these folks with this uh, wrathful, angry spirit. I'm not talking about all in, 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 in the world. I'm talking about these incredible Hulk folks turning green and mean in the church. And then you want to be nice to everybody else and then uh, behind closed doors, behind uh, your, your significant others, your spouses, your siblings, and such. And you, you, you raging. You angry. You mean. And this is not the anger we're talking about, righteous anger like Jesus did overturn. We're talking about uh, ungodly works of the flesh anger. Anger when you say stuff you don't have no business saying. Anger is when you hurting people. Anger is when you lashing out at people. This is the anger. This is the wrath that God said, mm-mm. You're not going to inherit nothing. See, that's what happened to Moses. He got angry and hit the rock. 
this is what he was operating in, and this is why he missed all his blessings. And this one here, mm, it says you shall not inherit. Did Moses inherit when he lashed out in wrath and anger? Fleshly anger? This is fleshly anger. This is not dealing with your issues and then taking it out on somebody else. This is when not controlling your spirit and your shell, your emotions and your uh, yourself. This is why therapy is needed. Sometimes you need to go to therapists. Go to a Christian counselor. Pray. Talk to somebody. Release it because a lot of that wrath and anger is some, is some stuff you need to deal with. And it's all embedded in your spirit. And you being all wrathful to everybody else. That's one. Uncontrolled rage, hatred. Just uncontrolled. Because God is love. And when he's wrathful, he's wrathful because he know he doesn't he doesn't want you to get hurt. He don't want you to perish. And he wants you blessed. This is not the God kind of wrath. This is the wrath where you just in your flesh and you're mean. And you're not dealing with, with why you mean, why you're angry, and why you upset. That's that spirit. Now, X one, strife, division, the spirit of strife. This is all works of the flesh. And Remember, you're not getting nothing from God operating in these. Now, the spirit of strife is division. You can't get along, but we call these the instigators, the agitators, the aggravators. The ones in the church, you know, saying stuff to aggravate, to instigate. Tell them that somebody doing something like this. You know, throwing out this little uh, word here, this little phrase or sentence or something they heard or said. And uh, it causes division and chaos and offense. See, these are the offense betas. The spirit of strife, the baits of Satan, they cause strife, competition, they quarrel. There's never a no common ground. I'm right, you not. I'm not. I I agree. I don't agree to disagree. I don't agree with you at all. You know these are the quarrels. These are the ones that quarrel. These are the ones that you know oppose, fight. You ever somebody somebody have a fighting spirit? That word. You can never get edgewise in, and they think you're going back and forth with them. No, you're not. You're trying to talk in peace. We all Christians, right? We all know Jesus, right? We all got the Holy Ghost, right? Right? These are the ones you like. Why are you acting like that? You can't find no common ground. You can't, you know, hear anybody else's opinion. You can't talk about somebody else. It's, it's, uh, you know, things like that. And what's going to happen is, Lord going to cut you off. You're going to get a lot of disconnection. You're going to lose a lot of friends. You're going to lose a lot of, pre a lot of opportunities in, in administering life operating in this. Because nobody like all that strife stuff. We don't like people that cause division. They just messy starters. They, we see that in the world. You know, bad, bad girls club, folks fighting in reality shows. Reality shows are not supposed to be in uh, the kingdom of God or the body of Christ or in churches. Strife. That's one. Now, the next one is seditions. Now, when I looked up seditions, the actual definition, undermining, causing disturbances. Man, this is this, this the cousin of strife. Uh, insights, fights, agitates. Yeah, they incite arguments. They'll say one thing to somebody, somebody another, and then everybody's confused and they come together, and then everybody start fighting and arguing and, and, and lashing out. These are those spirits. Those are those spirits right there that just cause insight arguments between a pastor and a teacher, an uh, evangelist and a soul here and a soul there, a believer here. These are the ones in sight because they said something, they did something, or created the uh, the atmosphere for a fight. Or saying so somebody else's ear to fight and on this somebody else's ear and things like that. These are the ones that incite this. This is the seditions. You just a fighter starter. A fi not a fire starter, a fighter starter. That's what these are. And you keep on starting fights. You know, those who, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. You start fights. You start arguments. You start chaos, sedition. You start division, grief. It's going to happen to you. You're not going to have no peace in your life operating in the spirit of seditions. Now, let's go to the next one. <coughs> now, the next one is heresies. Now, heresies... You know, people think, you know, heresies is, you know, false belief and doctrines against, you know, certain beliefs, against, you know, what is really true. Now, I'm telling you the truth. The truth, the way, the truth, and the life is Jesus Christ. If it's not come from his Bible, if it's not what God says in his word, if it's not bringing wholesome, 
These are for those who into other religions. If it's not bringing peace, love, joy, temperance, if I'm not, you know, good in my spirit, if my soul is not right, uh, I'm, I'm feeling a void in my life, then I may need to check what doctrine I'm listening to. Because heresies is anything that's not bringing the truth of God in my life, the love of God in my life, filling the voice in my life, dealing with my pains, my issues, my up, you know, my, you know, my, uh, my uh, challenges, my sins, my iniquities, my wrongdoings. If it's not doing them, doctors not doing that. That's the spirit of heresy. If it's telling me I can do whatever I want to do. No, 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 no. That's not the doctrine. If it's telling me to pray to some statues, mm -mm, that's not, no. Spirit of heresy, if it's not truth of God, and it's not going to make my life better, inward and outwardly, not the fake kind. Not the one that I pretend to be peace and then I'm rude. Uh-uh. Spirit of heresy. Don't operate. Don't be uh, listening to anything or reading anything or learning anything that is away from God's word, Jesus Christ, and truth. And people will try to challenge your truth. Truth is, is it going to make my life a whole lot better in what out? And when I die, where am I going? That's how you know that's the truth. That's God's word. Because you either going to heaven or hell. Not these other places that other doctrines have. So, you're not going to inherit and believe in Buddha. You're not going to inherit it as the kingdom of God. Inherit, uh, 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 listen to uh, uh, chants and new age stuff. You're not going to inherit it. Listen to the, the read the other stuff. How to channel your inner being and your inner self and divine enlightenment and, and breathe and look at trees and, and, and worship trees. That is not going to, Lord's like, I'm not a tree. I made the tree. Why don't you uh, pray to the creator of the tree, which is God, Jesus, that one. Now, the next one is enviancy, enviance, jealousy, if I'm saying it correctly, because I'm kind of messing up a little bit on enviancy. This is enviance. This is jealous. One what somebody else got. Now, in the world, people always envy. They want cars, you know, they want, you know, prestige, they want what you got, they want your husband, they want your man, they want your money, they want your body type, they want your hair, all of this. Now, this is also in the church. This is also in ministry. This is also the one that's sitting sitting next to you in the pew. Operate some people operate in the spirit of envy. They will want they want what you got. They want your anointing. They want your uh your power, your 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 uh your uh hair and they, they want what you got in the church. They want how you teach. And I be wondering, because these folks they be envying folks. You know, this is you know, I mean I be thinking like uh they more beautiful. They they, they actually toned. They don't need to do all that working out. You know, they got wonderful hair, natural. Because I be talking about myself, you know, how people be talking about, you know, um, why is why they envy a woman I got? Uh, th this is actually a hook. I get some help with this hair. You know, uh, they be having way more than I do. But God always told me that people envy what is inside of you. They envy the anointing, they envy the power, they envy, they envy the love that you have for God, your spirit, your prayer life, the light of Jesus. So, people can be jealous of what's in you that God has put in you. Not always what you got. That's part of it. But this spirit, if you keep on trying to envy other people and then try to tear them down in the mother spirits, you're not going to inherit anything because God wants you to have your identity in yourself. He wants you to know, like how he made you, which was fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you like that. So we're supposed to love what, how God made us and identify how God created us. What is our purpose in life? And that is it. Then you can inherit what God has for you. Because I may not want what somebody else got. I don't know what they had to go through. The pain and suffering, the mayhem and the chaos to get that. So I'm not going to envy nothing that I don't know what they went through to get it. How they got it. Now, the next one is murders. Thou shall not kill. We, we got some folks that have, have killed folks. Naturally and spiritually. Hurting people. You know, harming people. Premeditating. Just, just because you see it up on, on, on Netflix as a documentary on one of them serial killers does not mean it does not happen in church. And you can do it with your mouth. You can do it with your, 
your uh, words. You can do it with your, your mind. You can do it with a weapon. So, you're not going to hear nothing. This is a work of the flesh. Because you're destroying something. Somebody's life, somebody's mind, somebody's soul. And God did not give us no authority to do none of that. Now, the last one, the last two is drunkenness. Drunkenness, as I was looking up, of course, you know, to make sure I had the right definitions of them as I prayed, and the Lord gave me revelation. Intoxicating and excessive consumption. Hi. Getting drunk in love. Like, that's all. Drunk in some man. And you forgot all about God. Getting drunk and, and sipping. Lots of sippings. Get, getting high on medicinal stuff. Talking about it's, it, it, it's for your for your uh, your heart and your medicine. No, you you just want your eyes to twirl up. Drunkenness, just getting consumed with stuff, consumed with people. You not even thinking about God. You so it, it, drunkenness with this man, drunkenness with this woman. You consumed with uh mm -mm, sipping. You you, you you can't even read the word because you tipsy. Or you high and fly high as a kite. How are you on here to keep God and, and Lord Lord can't get you to control yourself? You not. You're going to get spirits. That's why when you go to liquor stores, it says spirits. So stop by bringing spirits that cause you to be drunk. And stop entertaining other spirits that cause you to be so drunk and consumed with yourself and flesh that you don't think about nobody God. But please in your flesh. This open up other doors and other spirits. Spirit world. All right. And the next one is revelance. Now, revelance is, when I was looking that one up, to indulge, to take this pleasure. Now, we're supposed to enjoy life. God told us to enjoy life. But this is when we take it to the extreme where we just reveling and taking pleasure and wallowing in the excess of stuff we don't have no business doing. That this what are we talking about? Overindulging. You you always uh, 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 out and about partying and doing stuff, and clubbing and stuff. And you supposed to be uh, studying the word and uh, 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 sanctifying and consecrating yourself. Now everything can be uh, uh, become an excess if, if it's, it start operating your flesh. You just uh, just want to please your flesh. You like going out. You like doing this. You like doing going shopping. You like, you like uh, buying this. You like going traveling. And traveling is good, but this all you indulging. You use like going out to eat. You like doing this all the time. It's over excess. Well, you gotta have balance, cause it could to the point where you just pleasing your flesh. You ain't worried about praying, fasting, seeking the Lord. You know, doing what He told you to do, cause you reveling. You can revel in relationship. You can revel in your job. You can revel in ministry. You can revel and, and revel to the point overindulging. Well, Lord's like, oh, yeah, have you forgotten? Do you, you got discipline? You need to have discipline in your life. So, this is excess. This is not balance because he wants to have a life. But these are spirits that he does not want any of his believers to operate in. How are we going to win? The unsaved. We operating in our flesh. They just came out the world in their flesh. They need some of us church folks, including myself, to be operating in the spirit of God. So the next set that you're going to hear is the fruit of the spirit. And how that is how we're supposed to be living and governed. Because that releases goodness and kindness. All this releases pain, suffering, bondage, yokes. Extra spirits, invasions, contaminations, vexations, frustrations, intoxications, stuff that we don't want and you need to get delivered from. So, this is Galatians 5. Make sure you read and study these and pray and repent if you've been operating any of these. Because you're not, it says you shall not. You're not going to get the kingdom of God. You're not going to get the blessings of God. You're not going to get the word of God. You're not going to get the increase of God. You're not going to get everything from God if you operate because you're in your flesh. And God's a spirit. And they that worship him, worship him in spirit and truth, not in flesh. So, keep praying with purpose and power. More intel. But we're going to talk about good intel of the spirit world. The, the part of uh, the spirit world you need to access, which is God, Jesus, and angels, and the Holy Ghost. So, like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you tell a friend, tell a neighbor about all this intel. 
let one of your peoples know if they're operating this. Go ahead and slide in this video and let them check it out. And check it out for yourself. Read the word for yourself. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.